that's really important. And I think it's improving as these drugs become, you know, more mainstream. Mm -hmm. So what do you say, um, or, or things that you could tell a patient who was really struggling with having to take the oral chemo? Um, because I have some friends who are on oral chemo. The pills are huge. And like you mentioned earlier with the schedules, you know, having to really stay on that, um, especially those that are, you know, a lot more complex, right. what are some things that the patient can do to make sure that they're adhering to their treatment, even when they really don't want to swallow that pill? Yeah. One of the simplest, uh, best straightforward things you can do is a chemo calendar. Um, whether that's provided by your provider or office, whether somebody prints it out of the internet for you, an actual paper calendar, I find, especially for older patients that aren't as tech savvy, even though I'm not that much older, I would be one of those people. I still like a day planner, even though I put alarms in my phone, there's something about that paper where they yeah. can write down the times of medication. We'll fill them out for the complex patients with like the times of day, whether they need food or not with it. Um, and how it's really important that it is chemotherapy, that it is a treatment for their cancer. Most of the time people on a oral chemotherapy regimen, it is a palliative, not curative treatment. So they probably will be taking some form of treatment for the rest of their lives. So mm -hmm. it's really important to understand um, that they need to be compliant with it and, and the reasons why not. So if it's that they're having trouble swallowing pills, it could be something as simple as taking it with a spoonful of applesauce. Um, if some, you know, that helps it get down easier or pudding or something that makes it easier to swallow. Um, if it's that they take the medication and they find they're having nausea or diarrhea, um, that we find ways to manage those side effects. A lot of patients are not used to taking a lot of medications before they get sick. And a lot of patients are really resistant to managing side effects. But I always tell my patients that it's really important to treat the side effects because if your body is focused on fighting pain, fighting sleep, fighting diarrhea or constipation, then it's not focused on healing. And so you really need to manage those things to have a good quality of life and to let your body be focused on you know, healing. So that's really hard. Um, I find that you have to start small because whenever you're faced with a cancer diagnosis, it's extremely overwhelming. Yes. I've been doing this for 25 years. I teach patients all the time. And when I was diagnosed with stage three triple positive breast cancer, and I knew exactly what my treatment was going to be and exactly what to expect from chemo. Um, there were other things I didn't. Um, I'd never had radiation. I don't work in radiation oncology. That was super scary to me. And so it's overwhelming. And when you first get that diagnosis or you're starting a new treatment, it can oftentimes feel like it's too much information. So it's really important for patients to have a good relationship with their provider, strong communication, and a voice and to know that they can speak up and ask what they need, you know, ask, right. ask what they need, yeah. And I, I, you bring up a really great point as far as like the patient voice matters and it can be really intimidating to, you know, ask your provider or even talk with the nurse, um, you know, like, hey, I'm in pain because you kind of feel like, no, I need to like just do it. And it's okay to ask for help, but also ask for explanations uh, as well. And that, wow. you know, a, lo a lot of people think that it's chemo, I'm going to feel bad. And of course, yes, you're going to have some side effects, but you don't have to suffer. We have so many drugs now and so many therapies, some even natural therapies that really help manage side effects so you can have a decent quality of life. Um, so I do find especially older patients, not to put people in a box, because I'm sure there's plenty of younger ones too, that are of that upbringing and mindset. Well, the doctor said to take this pill, so I'm going to take this pill. I don't want to bother the doctor. I don't want to bother the nurse practitioner. I don't want to be a bother. And this is the one time in your life where you need to be a bother. Right. <laughs> 
this is your life at stake. This is your life. And, you know, when you're on a treatment that's, you know, for a long time or not a curative, but palliative treatment. And when I say that, I don't mean that the patient is actively dying. I mean, it is a palliative treatment to keep their cancer, like I like to tell people in a simplistic way, sleeping. You know, you want to keep it sleeping so that you can go about and do the things you enjoy to the extent that you can um, without horrific side effects. And of course, everyone's goal, like I said, goal of therapy is really, really important um, because everyone's goal is different. There are some people whose goal is to live as long as possible, no matter, no matter Mm -hmm. how awful they feel. And you know what? That's okay. And there are some people that feel like they want quality of life, Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily quantity and stop treatment early because they they can't handle the side effects and that's okay. Um, Each person, you know, there's two ends to that and every person falls somewhere in there and no matter where you fall in that realm, it's okay. And sometimes people also um, fall at different places in different times in their journey, you know? That's a good point. In the point. beginning, it's gung-ho and I'm going to do everything I can. And they feel like stopping treatment is giving up and it's not. It's not. It just really depends on where you are in the journey. That is so important what you just said that um, it, it depends on where you are in the journey and that it's not giving up. You know, um, it, it's not a decision to be made lightly. If it's not losing a battle. Right. Right. A lot of people say that, you know, oh, they lost their battle with cancer. No, they lived their battle with cancer. Right. Right. And so um, it's really important to establish what those individual goals are for each patient. One of the things I really like where I work is we have a palliative care nurse practitioner that sees patients and it doesn't necessarily mean end of life patients. It's anyone that needs help with symptom management, quality of life issues. So it's really awesome. She comes around and sees, uh, she sees every stage four patient. And then she sees some patients even that aren't stage four, but that are really struggling with side effect management or with emotional issues and really helps them lay out a plan for what their um, journey is going to be, you know, what they want their journey to be. And that can, that can change. Like I said, it can change minute to minute, day to day, week to week, um, year to year, you know? So it, it's, I think it's really important to have that multidisciplinary approach where the patient feels supported and really understands what their goals are, what the side effects of the medications are. 